Every once in a while, a big corporation needs to get straight up kicked in the nuts. And I did. Controversial. One of the only dissenting voices out there in mainstream media. Yeah. 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 Finally, live and in person. Come on in, girl. Hi. <laughs> Look, Gina Carano's here, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think this one came your down <laughs> from Montana yes. to do this for me. Yes. Oh my gosh, can Absolutely. I go back home with you? Please, please. <laughs> I've There's never been. Plenty of chickens and horses and all of the good Are stuff. Are you on a farm? A ranch, a small ranch, yeah. Was yeah. that the plan? Um, I, <laughs> there was no plan. Plan? Yeah, there was no plan. <laughs> I uh, actually, I hopped in after I got canceled. I hopped into an RV and I was headed to Nashville thinking I was going to work with the Daily Wire. And um, we ended up doing what we were supposed to do, a movie in Nashville. And we ended up doing it in Montana instead. And then when I got to Montana, I was like, I could breathe. And once I could breathe, I mean, we were in an RV for quite some time. and um, You went from Los Angeles yeah, and living just, to an RV. So, like, you know, the cancellation happened February. There was, like, paparazzi. It was just, like, a really dangerous place for me on in my house. There was paparazzi. There was, like, vans par parked outside of my house. Uh, I didn't have, a, like, a gated community. So I, um, yeah, I bought an RV. And you escaped L.A. and ended up? Nashville to Montana. Yeah, yeah. On a and, ranch. In Montana, well, the ranch happened like a right. years later. But um, oh I lived gosh. in a guest house in Arizona for two years. It's like, it's just been kind of a journey since, I think, three, three years oh, ago. Oh, you're on a journey. All yeah. right. Let's, can we get into the journey, <laughs> yes, please? Yes. Can we go deep on the journey? First of yes. all, um, this is my weird little thing. Yeah. And you have really cute boots on, so you don't have to do it. But every show, yeah. I start off offering fuzzy <laughs> socks because when I wear fuzzy socks, yeah. then I forget about life and I just go da 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 and talk, okay. talk, talk and get comfortable. Yeah. And there's fun ones too. Okay. So you can take them with you or you can take off the sexy boots, whatever you like. Okay, let's take them off, but then you're going to see what's really underneath the sexy boots. <laughs> <laughs> this is called real. We're not <laughs> hiding anything here. <laughs> so it is underneath the boots. Yes! The yellow <laughs> socks. This is how we roll as women, right? It's, it's like, like, hey, what doesn't show? I'm always like, oh my gosh, yeah, I always guess, have to wear the black ones. I know, but guess what? I didn't know you did this on air, though. I was heck like, yeah, that. we do it on air. But from That's why from this moment on, nothing else matters. We yeah, can do whatever the heck we want. You know what's underneath. <laughs> okay, we have, this. these are kind of boring, like blue and white stripes, but feel them. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Now, there's these, too, that are a lot, are like alligator gold. <laughs> Maybe for the guys. Is there black ones? So no, I can that's just very gonna... boring. That is way too boring to, for you to have black. Aren't really? We, aren't we worried about, like, the, the feet people? What feet people? Oh, oh feet those people? pervs? Yeah. Well, there they go. <laughs> Freshly manicured. Okay, this one's kind of cute, right? Perfect. Okay, good. There we go. I love that. And and you can keep them. I don't need them back. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although they might be worth some money. Maybe I'll make you give them back to me, right? Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. It, it is my it weird is. little it's thing. It is. It's totally worth it. It's like, you know what? Take I just off relax. your, like, yeah, take off. Put it all off. Yes, yeah. get comfortable. Well, that's interesting you say that because I put it all on. So I'm surprised nobody's ever noticed this. But this is like, ponchos are my thing because I feel like... This is like, you cover all of this as like a woman, and then they focus more on this. Mm -hmm. You know, what you're trying to say. Interesting. What you're trying to, you know, say. So I wear this to almost like, I wear this, you'll see me, I've worn this all year at interviews, at really? um, fan expos, because I want people to pay attention to the things that I'm saying. And then the hat is just comfort, you know. Everything is comfort. Uh, that, Dude, this is very intentional. Me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like putting on an armor of safety. Because you could take that in a different way, like, okay, big, and I'm just covering up and try and, and being super conservative. But no, like, no. you know, you could take it in many different ways. Yeah, no. And this is so they do this. Yeah, so they listen like to my words. You know, when right. I want them to focus on other things, I'll let, I'll let people know. Mm. 
you know? Oh, you, yes. You're, you're good at <laughs> but that, But for too. now, like, maybe just listen to what's coming out of my mouth. Yeah, what a concept. Yeah. Words. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to give my mom a hard time when I was on, when I was at ESPN, um, because sometimes they, they'd watch this me literally this every day. This looks comfortable. I know, okay. right? This, this is this my stretch for the day. <laughs> um, she'd be like, text me in a commercial break. Um, okay, you look great, but I think you need a little more blush. I'm like, mom, did you hear how great I just did that highlight. Yeah. You're focusing on this. Yeah. And it was funny. It's the, you know, the protective mom, whatever. But it is, it's it's a thing where you want people to... Pay attention. Uh, yeah. And obviously certain people, I'm like, no, please tell me. What do I need? Yeah, yeah. But, um, and especially when you're a woman in a man's world, mm -hmm. which sometimes can be cliche too, but I, it's still a thing. Yeah. It's still... My grandmother is pretty classic old school from Oklahoma. Mm. Um and she'll tell me exactly how it is. Actually, my entire family will always tell me exactly how it is. So it's pretty funny, like, when the people come at me and, you know, the mobs come at you and they yeah. try to, like, you know, pick apart everything about you as uh, a woman that, you know, is they just they just pick, pick, pick. And it's like, is, do you think this is anything I've never heard from my, right. like— <laughs> The people close to me, and they don't. The people close to me don't say it in in a way that's mean or harsh. They say it's like, "Hey, if you want to do this, is what the norm is." And I'm always like, "Well, hey, I'm not really the norm." <laughs> We're gonna go the opposite direction then. Yeah. We? Yes, I'm like, <laughs> but we all need real people in our lives who are gonna tell us like it is. Be yeah. straight. Mm -hmm. And not having yes people yeah. in your life. Like, no, my, real. my family is not <laughs> yes people. <laughs> not a, nobody in my family is yes people. Well, and there's a lot behind that. And then the success as well, because I don't think any successful person has yes people. Like, you, if you're going to grow at whatever it is, and even just as a person, yeah. as a mom, as a sister, like, yeah. you need real people, not anybody who's kissing your butt. Yeah. Um, the butt has not been kissed by my family. <laughs> yeah, no. I know. I'm like, no, it's big enough. It's right here. No, 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 right there. <laughs> For the taking. You can't encourage me. No, no they're wonderful. They're wonderful. Um, I have been following so closely your story. Mm -hmm. And as a lot of people have, but um, I never thought I'd be sitting across from you, of all people, who has um, taken such a stand. And hey, two people in the same little area that have both sued Disney. Oh my goodness. What a concept. Like, I know. Nobody can say that. I know, we have that. <laughs> And I don't know that it's anything I would have ever asked for, asked to have in common with somebody. Yeah. Um, but it goes so much deeper than, hey, I'm just going to sue. Because, like, the least litigious person here, I know. Oh, gosh. I feel like when you take somebody to court, which I don't think I ever have. Me either. I feel like it's, like, so embarrassing in a way because it's, like, we couldn't figure it out in a respectful manner that we had to get somebody else involved and that sucks because it didn't have to be that way. Yeah. You know, the right thing could have just been done and the right conversations could have just been had as mature adults. And when you have to get, a, a, you know, lawyers involved, then, I mean, sometimes I just kind of want to just, I want to sit down with them. You know, I want to sit down with Bob Iger and be like, what is the problem here? Did you read my story? Do you understand what's going on? Do you understand just this individual case? And um, do we understand like what happened in the last four years that was completely um, brutal? And I, I don't understand the mentality here. Like at these board meetings, is it just about we gotta we gotta crush the ones that were actually asking the right questions? We have to put our thumb on them and we have to crush them because if we, you know, allow one of them to escape then, you know, the rest of them will come. Yeah. Well, I mean, can you imagine if they did the right thing in my case, how differently their business would start to look? Yes. But they're not— It's so short-sighted. They're not going to do that. They're going to they're gonna give me hell, and I know that. Well, that's because they've been able to get away with that forever. Yeah. And they're not used to people taking a stand. Yeah. I, too, would love to have Bob Iger on this couch right next to us. And we could just take— And by the way, him. this isn't that. Yeah. It's like, let's do the crazy, wild thing and have a conversation. Yes. Especially because I assume you've met him. Um, no. No? Never I've actually him. just been in, the like, at an event. Yeah. Um, he doesn't strike me as a man who is— um, not smart. He he seems very intelligent. Very mm -hmm. He seems, um, you know, you almost really like him because the way he communicates. Um, 
But what you can't like is what he's allowed happen to so many people in the last four years that I know of. This, that's when I started paying attention. Right. And, um, you know, he he wasn't a part of the Bob Chapek thing, but then they brought him back. And so it's like, I know they're trying to correct with Bob Iger, but it's just correct it then. They're, but, they're like the professionals. They tell everybody exactly how to apologize. Like, they should know how by now. And, sure, and but, maybe set the example. Yeah. There's a lot of layers there. And I'll say this, and this is maybe for something off camera. I don't know. But... Um, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I started ESPN in 2007, and, mm. and Bob Iger had, you know, already been there. And then, listen, I just think it's fascinating how about a month before COVID hit, all of a sudden, Bob Iger's retiring. He sold 500,000 shares, and he was out. Yeah. So, um, there's an interesting thing about election years, and, um, you know, that was a lot election? in 2000. In 2018, like, a bunch of CEOs went and they um, sold their shares and they got out, right? Um, what what year did he uh, get out? That was a month before the pandemic began, so February 2020. 2020, yeah. right. So he, um, obviously, they, they needed to bring him back. Well, 20, so you think about the timing, and I just don't, I, listen, Disney's ties in China are quite deep. Yeah. And so I think he knew what was coming. Mm. And, you know, and then Chapik had been there for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And let's slide him right in. He was embarrassing. But but what happened behind the scenes, mm -hmm. was Chapik ever allowed to actually lead? No, because Bob Iger was still there the whole time. Oh, I didn't in the know The background that. board, all the, oh, oh he, I... he never, he was never fully out of anything. Oh. And so you have your guy that's replaced you, but are you actually allowing him? Like to do running. the job, yeah. who's running it? Because you retire, but we're still over here. Right. And influencing and having discussions. Like whoever's running Biden. <laughs> right. There you so go. So, like, basically. There's another level. <laughs> but then, and then, there are there are certainly controversies with Chapek. Chapek did not want to get involved at all in the, don't say gay in Florida, those words never in the bill in Florida. He didn't want to get involved. He yeah. knew, and from a sports perspective, right, mm -hmm. he knew, like, like guys, Let's just keep this separate. And when we get involved in politics, don't we want everybody to watch our Disney products? Right. Um, at ESPN, don't you watch every, want everybody to watch sports, Republicans and Democrats? Right. Are, like, it's bad business. Mm -hmm. And I know that Chapek was very much like, let's not do this. And he was told to go and attack Florida and DeSantis and all that stuff. And then that blew up further. You continue on. The pandemic eventually goes away. And more controversy came. I don't think we'd know. Maybe someday we will know the full story of what Chapik was told to do versus what he wanted to do right. with certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe he's nearly as... Um, Qualified? As uh, I don't believe he's nearly as progressive or left-leaning as Bob Iger. Oh. I truly believe That's that. That's so fascinating because I was thinking that... I was like, there's no way that Bob Iger is this far. Oh, no, he's completely far left. Oh. He was going <laughs> to run for president. Oh. Oh, um, oh, no, 100%. And so then everything gets cleared up and, and things are a little bit better. Pandemic goes away. Oh, Bob Iger's back. Hmm. So who knows? I just have heard enough and you just watch enough and it's like, wait. And then and then chapek has gone and let's blow him up. He'd been there for 30 years. So there's a lot there and I don't know that we'll ever fully know, but I, I, do, um, I do agree with you that, listen, it's a huge company. It's a global company mm -hmm. and it's almost impossible to, obviously you can't know every employee, but I do think when things are bigger and public and front-facing employees, um, and when things are getting a little ugly, it's amazing what a phone call could do. Mm. It's amazing what just taking a, a, a little bit of time to understand. That's all I wanted. I wanted that um, too. And, and because the last thing you want is to attack and look like this you yeah. know, um, let me recap if if I could, like yeah. just just I, how I you got that there. I asked for that conversation. I said, you know, just have let, let, let's me and Kathleen Kennedy have a conversation. And Kathleen Kennedy, um, Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. and she's what was what was her title? Um, she, CEO. 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 Yeah. yeah, she runs it. Runs yeah. it, and her resume is quite extensive. Yeah, um, has pretty much done it all. Yeah, which is you know inspiring as a woman yes. until you realize like. I do feel like there are women in this com in this business and the entertainment business that stand um, and hide 
the um, the men that are controlling things, um, and so they they use these like strong women up front. Like, look at we're you know we've got a woman running this. When really it's um, I feel like they're being used and they're okay with being used, and so that they're the same women who also preach, "I am woman, let's yeah. support women," and then don't. Right. Yeah. And so and that's a choice. That is uh, brutal because it's kind of <laughs> the force is female, except for uh, no. Is it though? Is it just the force female is for is when you agree with them and you're controlled by them, or you know, like that's that's the problem. And I think there's a lot of um, you know women in these agencies, the uh, you know the top agencies that they're using. Oh look, we got a you got a female agent so diverse. who's yeah who's gonna have your back, and it's like no, they're they're just like them, and that's not to real. me. It's worse though. That's not really true diversity. If we're gonna talk about you know, you know, adding women in the workforce and like having that kind of like be more, um, it's really like they're to to hire women just to do your dirty work. Oh, for sure, for sure. But then, okay, not okay mm. if we accept it. Yeah. Like, what's that line? And it's hard because you're, you're continuing to try to break that glass ceiling. And no, I have to do it. And there, we all do make those compromises. Mm-hmm. But to what end? And then when you preach a certain thing, mm-hmm. but don't practice it yeah. by having that conversation with you, yeah, by yeah. leading and by understanding how freaking difficult it is to make it. Yeah. Are you actually helping other women do that and right. teaching men along the way? Right. I, I, I have had incredible experiences with with. Uh, the vast majority of men in my almost 30-year career, um, better than women mm-hmm. overall because there weren't as many. And then it was like, <sighs> yeah. and I'm like, ladies, there's room for all of us. Yeah, we're yeah. all here. We're, like, yeah. we're here. Yeah, yeah. Let's like, man, if we link arms and do this together, yeah. what a beautiful thing we could create. Yeah, yeah. In um, a genuine way, not like in a, a way that we have to oppress men in, you know, but in a, in a genuine, like, it's okay to be female, it's okay to be strong voiced, it's okay. I mean, all of my co-stars were voicing their opinions very, very strongly, um, politically and loudly, and made much uh, more aggressive comparisons than I ever did. Um, and then here I am, a female, expressing my voice, which I I never did before. I only, I only feel like I step in when I think things are going too far in my entire life. And I've never really used my voice. And so I started using my voice because that's how concerned I was. And then uh, I looked at my co-stars and I'm like, well, they're allowed to. They're easily allowed to do this. And so I'm going to ask questions. And I didn't do it as aggressively. I didn't say who I was voting for. Um, I mean, you saw like the whole left was like, you know, taking off their clothes and doing naked campaigns for who they were voting for. Yep. And then over here, it's like all I did was put a little I voted sticker on my hands that I voted. And people are like, racist. And I'm like. Wait, that's uh, all you I did never with that? Even, I, at, that, at that point, I'd never even said I'm voting for Trump. You know, I'd never even had said that at that point. And. I was called a racist, homophobe, transphobe. I was called everything. It was so absurd, my cancellation, which is why I think um, the people that were really paying attention were like, oh, my word, this is how aggressive this is. And if it can happen to someone who is basically um, not—I don't feel controversial at all. Um, I feel like a normal person in the middle that uh, just kind of— was asking questions earlier, where now you can ask questions about the lockdowns, you can ask questions about masks, you can ask questions about vaccines. Um, and that would be fine. I don't think you would get fired now. You might get a target on your back, but you might not get it like brutally fired. It's not as bad as it was when I, and I was asking early on too. And yeah. yeah. So, but I was asking it, you know, early. Mm-hmm. And um, that put a huge target on me, mm-hmm. and it just sent the whole kind of mob after me. And they, I liken it to, I think it, it was in Blade, where it's like one of like these innocent people walk into a club full of, um, you know, vampires, 
And, like, this person who isn't a vampire walks in, and then, like, at 12 o'clock, you know, all this, like, blood starts raining, and then they all just attack, and they sink their teeth in Ugh. and just start sucking the life out of you. And um, that is what happened to me. Um, a man last week just took his life. Uh, he's a comic book creator, and he just took his life because the mob went after him and accused him of things. Whether he did them or not, it was more about, he said, the internet bullies murdered me. God. And um, so it was really important to me when that, that was all happening to me that I knew that <laughs> I knew this like firing was not going to be like a, oh, let's go to do a Daily Wire movie and you're going to be okay. Like I know the way I feel things very deeply and... Um, you know, I knew that was going to hang on me for a second. And then um, it wasn't until this lawsuit that I felt like it, this, this weight got lifted off of my shoulders and my chest. And it was like somebody stood up for me. You know, somebody actually said, I'll, I see your case. I see you. I want to defend you. Um, this was injustice, and let's go take them to court and and have the court decide. And um, since that moment, I've just felt like I didn't know I needed to do that. You know, I didn't know I needed to stand up for myself that hardcore. I didn't know that the world needed to see that because now we have phone calls coming in. Now it's like a breath of fresh air. So I've been living in this, like, I didn't realize I was carrying that shame of being fired. Nobody wants to be fired. I didn't want to be fired, you know. I didn't want to have that out there. But now I'm, like, it's, like, it's lifted. And it's pretty awesome. I have many questions about what you just said. And there's a moment there where I was, like, okay, deep breath, Sage, don't cry. Because when you, when you said that, you know, you felt so supported um, when it's pretty lonely out there. So hold that thought because I want to make sure um, that's actually the most important part of why I wanted to talk to you is that part of what's here. Um, but the tweets that you put out um, that, you know, or kind of the beginning or part of your cancellation and firing, um, I, wanted, I wanted to hear from you um, you know, I think we all learn and evolve through things. And I have been asked several times, okay, do you wish you had not said this or said this differently? Like, what did you mean, et cetera? And I'm like, no, I meant what I said. Like, I can't control how you receive it. Mm. Uh, our words do matter. Our tone does matter. Yeah. Um, I want people who didn't know, I want to read this tweet from you. Mm. And um, because this is the one that you got, you got killed for this one, yeah. right? February 2021. And it was in reference to, you know, being judged for being yourself mm. and cancel culture, basically. Um, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? Yeah. How long did it take you to write that tweet, first of all? Because I know how careful yeah. you, you know the impact of words. Well, I didn't write it. Um, it was a screen capture, and it was posted on a Twitter fleet mm. and on an Instagram fleet. So it so was, it was a something. screenshot that you didn't even write, but it stood for what you were saying, which yeah. is how yeah. you're— It was just—for um, me, it was something that I— I feel like it went hand in hand with the Auschwitz Museum, don't hate your neighbor, kind of, it started with neighbors kind of um, tweet. It, it doesn't just start like, all of a sudden somebody pops up a Nazi and then it becomes this trend, you know? Like it starts with propaganda, it starts pre-Nazi. It starts like, hey, we're gonna start picking on these people and we're gonna start demonizing these people. And oh, now these people aren't doing this. And okay, so like, I always, like, thought my whole entire life, like, how how did we let that happen? How did any human being or group of human being uh, or, you know, a whole entire country or world, how would they let that happen to the Jewish people and all the people 
that ended up in the concentration camps. It never made sense to me. And then um, when I started seeing how like people were going along with the propaganda that I, I just, I kind of woke up in 2019 and mm-hmm. 2020, I was like, oh, I'm starting to understand how people are manipulated to turn against each other. And so it was never anything that was um, what every single uh, Hollywood or major news media wrote up. She's comparing Republicans to the Jewish um, people in the Holocaust. And did you read that in there? Did you read anything about Republicans? It's not. It was literally just saying, people, we are turning against each other. Um, and the history repeats itself. And we need to be cautious of that. Um, while all of our emotions are running so high. And it just seemed like it could reach everyone, that statement. And um, I've used that. Have I done it on Twitter or publicly? No, but I do it in conversations all the time. Yeah. It isn't a direct, we're not saying this is as bad yeah, yeah. as what happened, you know, yeah. with Hitler and Nazis. No, but it's it's a slow burn. And, and to your point, it it evolved and it got to that point where then 7 million people. Yeah. So I understand. And you know what? I'm convinced that the majority of people absolutely understood what you were saying. Right, right. Chose Mm -hmm. to do what? Chose to blow it up and turn against you and make it the opposite. Yeah. And put words in my mouth, which had been happening for a year. They had been hunting me for a year. And then you gave them, basically, they needed teed it up. Yeah, they needed that. And um, it wasn't anything compared to what some of my co-stars said. And they made, they've made they made references to Republicans being Nazis. They've re- made references to, you know. And by the way, I adore all of my co-stars. I'm just saying what I, what I put out there was more about for everyone, Democrats, liberals, people who don't vote, Republicans. That was for everyone to stop demonizing each other and stop attacking each other. Dividing. Because it— yeah, that's what it was. And I read that and I hear people read that now and people will, they got so manipulated by the Hollywood press who, it was just headlines of Gina Carano um, compared Republicans to Jewish people in the Holocaust. And I couldn't control that. And the messed up thing is, you know, here you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with Disney and Lucasfilm. These people know deeply, especially especially Lucasfilm and especially Disney, they know what a smear campaign is and they know how it works. And these people have worked for this company for 30 plus years and they knew I was getting smeared and they knew what I was saying, but they were on their side of the mob because I wasn't toting their narrative um, because I wasn't saying what they wanted me to say. And they joined in in their final statement of saying I was abhorrent and denigrating people off of their religious and um, cultural beliefs. And that was a statement to the entire Hollywood, everyone everywhere, do not touch this person. My agency dropped me the same day, and my entertainment lawyer dropped me. I had nobody to defend me. I um, was alone and was confused. Uh, Here I am. Here I am trying to ask the good questions, you know, ask the things that are hard to talk about when I don't ever say anything, and I'm very quiet, usually. But I asked about the masks, and I asked about the lockdowns, and I asked, you know, about the vaccines. And would I take any of it back? <sighs> um, my best friend texted me two years ago, and he said um, he had been to prison for four years for a DUI, and as soon as he got out of prison, he moved straight in with me. And I hadn't seen him for a couple years, but he's like, he was like the person that knew me, and I knew him, and we were not perfect individuals, and he wasn't perfect. Um, But uh, he... (laughs) texted me and he called me Bumblebee because I'm always, I'm always bumbling or I'm always buzzing about. And uh, we lived together for six years. And uh, he said those six years that I lived with you were the best um, times of my life because it was the healthiest he had ever been. Um, 
And so then he texted me and we started talking and he's not online. You know, he likes to be in gyms and he likes to, you know, just, he's, he, he's just not, he's not online. Um, so somehow he didn't know what I was standing for and not forcing vaccinations on people. And um, he said, oh, I said, you didn't, did you get the vaccine? And he said, yeah, I got the vaccine. I got the Pfizer. You know, I need to be ready if you ever need me <laughs> to come overseas. I was like, Anthony, I didn't get it. And he was like, oh. And we joked around about it a little bit. And the next day he passed away. So, so when people ask me, if I would have done anything different, I would have screamed. I would have screamed so much louder. Screamed what? Everything I was saying from lockdowns to mass to vaccines, question everything. Do not allow these people to force this on you. Pay attention. I would have screamed it. Um, so he had, <laughs> they had him, they had him, you know, cremated. They didn't do an autopsy. His legs had begun to swell and he was having trouble breathing. And he, three weeks before he passed, he was supposed to go see a blood doctor and a heart doctor. Um, so, yeah. I would have screamed. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, that was unexpected. So I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. For what I said, for what I posted, for what I was standing for, what I was screaming for, or trying to scream for, like, I'm not sorry. Sorry. I know you have a faith in God. What do you think he's saying to you right now, your friend? What is Anthony saying? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, he was funny. <laughs> he would laugh. He, he would laugh and cry. He was, um, he was the most unique, special person I'd known. And uh, <laughs> he would just deep, deep, deep chuckle. And I think he'd be very proud. And I think... Uh, That's what it is. Yeah. Because um, even though... Let me ask you. They didn't do an autopsy. No. And the family, his family, like... His mom what? and me spoke about it, and we both genuinely believed it was due to the vaccine. Um, you know, but there was a long history with him, and, you know, very troubled. He, he was one of those tragic souls that I mm -hmm. I fell in love with in eighth grade when he walked into math class, and I had the biggest crush on him all the way through to high school. Um, but it got so intense that, you know, um, his addictions and stuff like that became very intense. Then, uh, you know, he had his DUI, he went away for four years and then he got out and the six years he was with me, you know, first of all, we had established the friendship boundary. Yes. This is it. <laughs> yeah. You, you were cute back then. And yeah, you still are. <laughs> yeah. But then it was just this deep, deep relationship that, um, was just so, you know, those relationships where I don't have that many friends and we were inseparable. We were, um, we fought like cats and dogs and we made up and loved each other and had each other's back. And I, I believe in that, that text message the day before he died, I hadn't seen him for a while. And so I was like, well, we got to go to the melting pot because we used to go to the melting pot and I'd bring a scrabble board. Mm. That was just something I like to do. And, just slow cook and sit there for four hours and play Scrabble and just, you know, relax. And he was my best friend. And um, 
I don't know. It's been hitting me hard lately that he's not here. It'll be two years in June, I think. So Why do you think it's hitting you hard now? Um, <laughs> just, aren't we all angry? Like, there's so much injustice that's happening. Like, there's so many people's lives that are affected. Like, aren't we pissed off that, like, just that even they tried to force this on people, and now that people that who took it have the question in their head regardless for the rest of their life is my, you know, you, you basically injected doubt. You force injected doubt into people. And that is like, makes me so angry. And all you wanted to do and all I was doing was just asking questions because I was unsure and scared. Yeah. Because I, it doesn't take a genius to do a Google search to understand with vaccines in particular. It's yeah. six to nine years through the FDA before they get approved on average. Yeah. This was shoved through. Yeah. It was political. Yeah. And all I wanted was time. Yeah. Please just give me a little time because this is happening way too fast. I'm right. a single mom and yeah. I need, um, and I'll never forget. Like I had to get it. Or I had to quit my I was gonna get fired. Yeah. Disney. ESPN. I was disgusted with myself because I caved. When you're preaching to your kids, like, stand up for what's right. To not, and I, but I, it's the only way. It's just me. So who's going to pay the bills? Who's going to feed my kids? Who's going to yeah. send them to college? Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm still pissed yeah. about ha- being, having to make that decision. Mm-hmm. And so now, and then, yeah, I think about it all the time. Yeah. I do remember, though, praying yeah. at that moment that it was happening. Yeah. And just like, maybe I just, maybe it's just water that yeah. they're putting in, in here, you know, because that was what I had to do to and get through know, it. I do think that, you know, I do 100% think God's in control. Yes. You know, he, you know, no life gets taken without his yes. So I do believe that, you know, I don't want people to live in fear of what they've taken, you know. I mean, or what I just wanted the conversation. And, um, but that's the key with this. Yeah. You just wanted to talk. And then when you put things out there that were factual, like, well, what about this? What about this? Then you're yeah. demonized. And I still believe that not everybody who did that to people like us yeah. fully believed it. But there's this fear that if they don't go along yeah. with it. And so, by the way, this is not a, oh my gosh, woe is us. That's not what this is. Mm-hmm. This is like, if we don't wake up mm-hmm. and pay attention, like, we're all in trouble. Yeah. And my lawsuit is already settled with Disney. Yeah. Yours, ongoing. But, like, at some point, when you chose to stand up, it was bigger than you. You're already screwed. Yeah. Right? Well, when I was going through it, I was going through a very big struggle session. And it was very aggressive, long, long. I had anxiety, and I'm sure you've felt this before. Anxiety is so bad that you can feel feel it in your skin where you you feel your everything that's everything's hurting Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. I was questioning everything I was like just what am I doing but I just I woke up and I wrote a read a psalm a day and I was reading this book um a silver refined I think it's by Kay Arthur okay and it's basically yeah you go through the fire and you know it refines you And so I kind of just, I don't know. I didn't know that Disney was going to be as aggressive as they were. I couldn't have been my last, like, I couldn't believe that I had to find out that I was let go and fired and so aggressively online because it directly put me in danger. I mean, reporters flocked to my house, stalkers. I mean, I had to hire for my own money, private security to sleep over to make sure that um, I was okay. I was, like, experiencing extreme paranoia. Um, and that was here in Los Angeles. Yeah, that was in Hermosa Beach. And I just knew I couldn't stay here. Like, they'd always know where I am. Um, and I, it was so extreme to the point of just, I 
I was so paranoid. It, it did a number on my mental state. Like, I have my bag over there, and uh, I carry my laptop everywhere I go. If I come into town, I don't leave anything in the hotel rooms because I experience this level of harassment and um, very strange things like a military-grade drone um, showed up at my house in Hermosa Beach, and the upstairs was like you look out to the beach, and it just went directly in front of me and just looked at me and stayed there. And I was like, this is petrifying. And so then after— Tell I had, what it is. It's evil. It's evil. This is evil. And then when I moved away from California and I went to Prescott, Arizona, where my mom used to have a ranch, yeah. we're, we're like 40 minutes outside of where the town Prescott is. We're 40 minutes outside. That same drone— What? You popped up where there's barely any houses. Prescott's the middle of nowhere, Arizona. Yeah. Same drone popped up, not trying to hide— not trying to hide at all. Who do you think that was? I don't know, but there was, that wasn't the only thing that was happening to me. Um, I have my thoughts, of course, but I, I feel like a lot of it was to induce paranoia, which it did, and a lot of it was harassment, and a lot of it was, um, you know, we could do anything to you at any point. Oh, and we're in control. They, they can. They can to a point because God would have to okay that. You said something, um, I don't know where I heard it or read it, podcast maybe, that you were on about um, shame. You said it earlier today too. And I remember, I remember being in airports even before I decided to file my lawsuit. Mm. Um, I remember going into work mm -hmm. after I got suspended. They, they keep saying, they don't like to say, they like to say sidelined. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it was suspended. It was a paid suspension, but it was suspended mm -hmm. when you punish someone and pull them off the air. And I was told how everybody at work uh, that I worked with for all these years, you know, you've offended them, you've hurt them with your words, you've hated them. So, so, so when I walked back in, eventually when they allowed me back in, it was like you feel, and I felt shame and I felt mm -hmm. embarrassed. I felt like I'd let everyone down just mm -hmm. by being true to me. Yeah. And um, I remember... I wasn't able to make eye contact mm. for a while, you know? Yeah. Because um, I was so afraid that it would be venom coming back at me. Mm -hmm. And I was um, afraid that I had hurt or embarrassed people mm -hmm. um, by asking questions. By For me, it was by being true to who I am as a, a person with a white mom and a black dad and being proud of all of me, not just half of me. Like, is that so bad? And it's right. like, no, I'm a racist because— right. So all these things, and I just, I did say at one point, this isn't worth it. You're such a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Like, just shut up, and you're good, and you can continue to make all that money and be the face of whatever. You just stay silent. Mm -hmm. And they want, they meaning the world, wants you to be afraid mm -hmm. and to just go quiet. Mm -hmm. That's why they come after you. That's why they send drones. That's mm -hmm. why they send threatening emails. And I just want to know for you, like during that time of shame, mm. during that time when you, like me, were almost the only time I was okay having a mask on was when I had been canceled. Because I was like, screw these masks. Oh, follow the science. They don't work, but fine. I'll put 10 of them on. Mm -hmm. but for that one time, I was like, when I go to the grocery store, no one will recognize That's me. That's so insane that you just said that. <gasps> it's it, the truth. It was the grocery store for me. Yes. Because I had this amazing black guy at the grocery store that I would go in. I met him in Hermosa Beach. Um, and I went up to him and I was like, I just got to ask you, I've been trying to perfect ribs for the longest time. And I was like, what do you do? What is the sauces? I need, like, for the longest time, I've been trying to perfect Obsessing ribs. Obsessing over ribs, okay. Yeah, I've been trying to figure it out. And me and him hit it off so uh so hardcore that every time I went into the grocery store, which was a lot, he'd always come up and we'd like, you know, walk up and down the, you know, aisles. And he was so proud of me for the Mandalorian. And we'd, we'd just hang out in the grocery store and just, you know, laugh and have so much fun. And then when I was fired, I put on my mask because I didn't want to see him. 
because he came up to me. He's like, Gina, what are they saying? And I was like, they're lies. <laughs> and I don't know how to tell you that. All these major media companies are lying. And so that, that hurt. I didn't what mean did he to say? go on your show and cry Wait, so are, much. Are you kidding me? First of all, <laughs> this is real life. Yeah. So, okay, you're this incredible actress with this amazing career, and you're so talented and all these things. And guess what? And you're, you've proven you're tough, but guess what? You're freaking human. Yeah. And you're standing tall, and you've got the most powerful man in the world on your side right now. <laughs> Hi, can I be friends too? Like, <laughs> but like, no. No. Does he have Hi, any room? Can I be Does he have any room? Can you I'm help actually, me too? I've never met him. But that, like, look at how I've much that speaks I've about never, him. Yeah, I've the never point, had a phone call with him. I've never met him. Elon Musk, in case you guys don't know what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, the man, and, the mystery has... And when, when I found out, when my mom sent me the screenshot of his tweet and, like, I got your back and who else has been wronged by Disney, I was like, yeah. I was at a mall. I never go to malls. I'm alone walking a mall because I have no life in the middle of Connecticut. <laughs> and it's cold. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I got emotional when yeah. I saw that Elon Musk chose to support you in that way yeah. and i am um, oh. i'm so grateful for him in so many ways doesn't oh mean you gosh. agree with everything someone says he's just grateful for doing the right thing yeah. to buy the damn platform mm -hmm. and to try to get us back as a country but like he has chosen it my point with this is like he's who listening. cares though I, no, but who cares if we get emotional because guess what oh. we are human yeah and I believe this firmly. This is why I wanted to do this show in general. Yeah. Like, you can have this and go on screen and do all of the things and mm -hmm. fancy life and you're stunning and all of these things. And guess what? Everybody's got something. You're something. You probably have other somethings, but this something mm -hmm. happens to be pretty big. Yeah. And you're not a freaking robot. Yeah. Like, this takes a toll. And what happens? Even if you have Elon on your side. And and when you talk about the shame and and the mask and yeah. and that man in the grocery store who I'm guessing was like, I love you, girl. I'm hoping. Yeah, he, no, he did. He was, right? He was just like confused though. The of confusion course. hurt me. The confusion and I, I definitely got emotional and kept my mask on and wanted to get out of the grocery store as soon as possible. And I haven't seen him since, but. It just that shame of not being able to explain to him how the Hollywood media was working, how Disney was working. I, I couldn't tell him all in one, you know, and I'd just been fired and finally got, you know, I had to go to the grocery store. By the way, at the same time I went to the grocery store that day, I had a, a tail on me. I went up to um, the uh, butcher to get some ground beef or something, and the guy walks up. And starts asking some questions and like, you know, and so whether it was a journalist or wherever, this, I had people following me and it was so dangerous. It was so insanely dangerous. Um, Disney put out just randomly, had no respect to call me and say, you're a wonderful employee while you're on set. We just don't agree with, you know, what you're thinking and we're going to not just work with you. They, they went brutally online and leaked it online and said, this is what's going on. We're distancing ourselves from a person who said beep, bop, boop, from a person that was questioning lockdowns, masks, and Beep, vaccines. bop, boop is in reference to you being told that you had to put pronouns in your bio. And I put beep, bop, boop, but I only, I didn't even do it to do it against any trans people. I did it to just say, you can put whatever you want in your bio. Right. You people need to back off. Stop and, forcing us to. Yeah, I'm not going to play your little game. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to put, droid noises and that was actually the biggest meltdown but my the the weird thing is it's like they'll let somebody like you know james gunn uh say a bunch of like awful which i think he apologized for but very awful pedophilic um tweets and hire him back just a year later well i mean i've been i don't know canceled here for uh you know three years now and no apologies for what did I what did I say <laughs> that was so offensive? What was it worth for me to have a fighting career, a clean climb? You know, there was no me too with me. I mean, I've been in those rooms that those uh, some of those rooms with those people. Nothing happened with me because I had I that was a no. 
you know, I've been in situated like maybe one situation where I thought I might have to put my elbow down the center of somebody's face. But <laughs> I mean, I think he was understanding that <laughs> that could happen. <laughs> he? Yeah. Um, can Before you do that, can you invite me over? And I, I just want to watch <laughs> when you do this. I always have a very, like, I feel like God really works in mysterious ways. And I do feel like things do come when they're supposed to, you know, and justice does happen. Maybe not the way that we always want, like, but it does happen. And that justice is, like, far scarier for these people than any action actress could possibly affect, you know. So that is, you know, the, you, you, I'm small time, but what you're dealing with is you're dealing with God. And when you're dealing with God, then I really feel bad for you. I just want to finish up on this one, this one part. Like, okay. <sighs> you find out you're fired. And I read that you... We're on the ground, mm. yeah. sobbing. Yeah. And you go from that, mm -hmm. the shock, the embarrassment, the shame, feeling like you said the word that I couldn't believe I heard you say this because I'm like, that was, you felt like you're in a desert. Yeah. Living alone mm -hmm. by yourself, even if you had friends and family, like that, ex that experience mm -hmm. publicly. Um, how did you pull yourself out to the point that you're here today? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I don't think we ever, we'll never forget. You never mm -hmm. fully recover mm -hmm. from, like, David versus Goliath. Goliath intentionally crushing David, yeah. which is what Disney did. Mm -hmm. How are you here today compared to where you were when this began? Um, so as soon as that happened, I was in, I just remember... I totally get the understanding of, like, curling up into a ball, putting the covers over you, and just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. Well, it was really strange, really very, very strange, um, was I was curled up in a ball, and I finally, like, opened up, you know, and how your, you know how your TV's on that screensaver? Mm -hmm. um, my, my TV started doing this, like, weird, like, code. It started flashing, and I know that sounds like so conspiracy. It sounds like a massive conspiracy, but it was so so shocking that was happening to my TV. I've never seen this do it, and it was doing this like code, and I was like stopped, and I looked at it, and I was like, "What is that?" And this is while you're the uh, breakdown in your worst moment after worst moment. finding out and so i'm like sitting there i'm bawling i'm crying on my bed and i like come and i look at my tv and it's just doing this thing and i was like okay and that pulled me out of it and i was like that's really strange um and then after that i started to lose my hearing which what? was very strange yeah i was like I, I started losing my hearing which was um uh, for seven days, uh, you know, we had all the paparazzi coming to the door and we had to close all the blinds and stay in the darkness. But then I was also in the darkness of my head because I lost like 95% of my hearing. And um, it was dark. It was like this, uh, I was being tortured <laughs> in my brain. It was like I was in silence. I couldn't talk to really anybody. Um they had to speak loudly, and I, you know, it was just a very strange seven days. And uh, I guess how I'm sitting here today is that I'm still healing because I just feel like I just got rid of the shame when Elon Musk um, came to my defense. And now I'm kind of like, even like people around me are like, you're different now. I know I've been very wow. emotional in this interview, but I am different now. I feel like the shame is lifted. And I read this passage in the Bible that you're not going to feel this anymore. You're going to move on. And I was like, no matter what happens with this lawsuit, I'm going to move on now. I've sat in that desert. I've sat alone. I've uh, gone through it, and I've got some of the most incredible support from around the world. Um but now I'm ready to move on. And for some reason, 
just sticking up for yourself in a lawsuit did that. And so now I'm, I've got two shows I am, that I'm working on creating. I've got writers I'm talking to. I'm here this weekend in L.A. to speak to one of them. And we are starting to get the, um, I know the financing will come. Um, I'm not worried about it because I know I'm going to, I'm going to tell stories. I think that we need to tell stories. And I thought I might've been done, you know, I thought I wasn't coming out of the desert. I thought, okay, this is where I am now. I need to get used to this desert. And, um, this lawsuit brought me back out. And now I have the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of how things work. I see, um, how people are in uh, fearful situations. Yeah. I see how people are when they're trying to save themselves and how they'll walk over your body, Ugh. you know. People that you thought were friends. They will walk straight over your body. You, that you lived with or been with for a decade. And mm. I don't know if you felt this, but first it's that hurt mm. with that person. You're like, what? Yeah. Them? what they've said, what they don't say, mm -hmm. what, what phone call they don't make. Yeah. Um, and and then it's anger. And then you realize, mm, I think it's bigger than that. Because mm. you know deep down there's a good heart. Mm -hmm. It is amazing what fear will do. Yeah. And it truly uh, will freeze people or make them even lie mm -hmm. and not be true to themselves and not do the right thing and Call Gina Carano, mm -hmm. send a text. Doesn't mean they have to agree with you, yeah. but to care for you as a person. Mm -hmm. So have you been able to let go of or forgive in your own way some of those people who weren't there for you? Yeah. No, I forgive. Um, I forgive. I've been forgiven in my life. So I forgive. Beautiful. But um, I love that you're saying that by filing the lawsuit— you feel, first of all, your smile, like your whole body language changed when you just when you told that story, mm -hmm. and by by filing the lawsuit and in conjunction with having Elon Musk say, "I see you, yeah, and I want to help you." Yeah, <sighs> it's just. I think what's really cool about Elon Musk is that um, no matter what is going on with Elon Musk, I don't know him as a person. But he seems to be connected to an understanding of the heart mm. of um, what people— I don't think a lot of billionaires are connected to what is— or, or a lot of Hollywood or a lot of actors are connected to what real-life people are going through or the, um, the wrongs that have been done. And there's something, a part of his heart, that has an, uh, an empathy and a sympathetic, like, uh, reaching out to understanding injustice and being bullied— and um, no matter what it's cost him, which was <laughs> insane, he's um, connected to that. And that is a beautiful thing as a human being to be. Yeah. And um, I appreciate it so much, um, those kinds of people. I never thought I was tough. And because I'm like, I'm an emotional person and I cry once a day at least. My kids are always like, oh gosh, there she goes again. <laughs> But I think, beautiful. yeah, I, I don't, I haven't tried to change that. I think I tried to toughen up because when you're in this world that we're in, yeah. you have to be tough and strong and fight and do all the things. And, and then this cancellation happened. I think my first cancellation was like 2017 and then countless times since. And then, then you go, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I woke up the next day. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. And I still... Wow, I still have a lot of people who do love me, yeah. and people that like don't care what I what my opinions on politics are, or yeah. things that really don't matter. Like, did you ever realize? Okay, your physical strength we know from your fighting career, right? Mm -hmm. But that's secondary, isn't it, mm -hmm. to internal strength? Well, let me say this about you, and I just I've just met you today, but you've got such a beautiful gift of like. I don't know. Like, I haven't cried that much, <laughs> like, recently. Um, you've got a beautiful gift of healing. Your, whatever happened to you is allowing people to sit in this chair mm -hmm. and heal. And that is, um, that's a gift. Like, a, somebody yeah. asked me once, you know, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? And I, would, I said, I would love to heal people. If you could have a superpower, it would be to heal people. 
Um, and so everything that's happened to you in your life, you get to sit here and now help people heal. And I think, you know. That's the God part for me. Yeah. That's the why behind it. Yeah. When we ask why this is happening. Yeah. Um, why you wouldn't change anything you said mm -hmm. because of your best friend who died. Yeah. Like, it's the why. Sometimes we just don't know when we're in it. Like, yeah. why? This is a lot. I knew my why also was during, while it was happening, was my nieces. Um, I have one niece who's half black, half white, and I have one niece who, you know, all the other nieces are like Irish looking almost. <laughs> um, but they're all so darling. And I, I hate what was happening. I, they all get the same love. They all get, you know, I, I hated the division that yes. was happening. And I don't want my little niece to grow up and feel that division. Um, I don't want them to grow up and be force injected with anything. I want them to look at their aunt and I want them to be proud. And so <laughs> I knew that a lot of people with families, you know, they couldn't risk it. Oh, so many people, you know, that's why I go to fan expos and these mothers come up to me and they're crying and they're like, thank you so much. Because had we said something, we would have lost our jobs and not been able to take care of our children. And I, I knew at that time, like, um, that speaking out was important because, you know, I didn't have children you know, that I that were on the line for me. And so it would just be me and Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, and me and him would take the brunt of it. And, you know, I admire what you did because you did have, you do have children and you set a beautiful example for them. That sometimes will. They don't, sometimes they hate that their mom um, didn't, doesn't just get quiet and let them be normal. And I, I, I struggle with that. I'll say this. Um, the night before my lawsuit dropped with Disney, um, I, my oldest was in college. My middle, my son was a senior in high school and my youngest was a sophomore in high school. So, you know, they're on social media and they've been attacked and they've had death threats mm -hmm. from people because they're mom. And that's like, that's where Mama Bear will come out and I will, I will cut you. Mm -hmm. And then some, if yeah. you do that, you know, I can't control it. I need to, yeah. but um, I wanted each of my children to know mm -hmm. um, what was coming. Mm -hmm. And over the last prior, you know, the years prior, they had been asked by teachers, coaches, parents, like, so your mom. And I'm like, if you have a question about their mother, come yeah. to their mother, mm -hmm. let them be kids. Yeah. And so I said to them, this is coming. I need you to know and be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, however, don't you ever feel like you have to defend me. Yeah. Ever. If someone says something, you can say, my mom has a right to her opinion, just like everyone else. Mm -hmm diversity of thought. That's always been my thing, and it always will be. Tell me I'm wrong to push for diversity here. I said, but don't ever feel like you have to defend me, okay? Please, don't take that on. Because um, I, I, I hated that by me taking a stand, it affected them. Yeah. Sorry. See, it's your fault. No. But um, they each took it differently. My oldest was in college, and she's like, okay, I got you, and I know you're right, mom. Just be careful. My youngest daughter, she's 15. She's like, no, please yeah. stop. I just want to be, I just want to go to, I just want to be normal and look what you're doing. And I got that too. I did. I got that. My son, who's quiet, he's in between, you know, the two crazy girls and their crazy mom. And um, I started to tell him, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry if this affects you, but I have to do this. I can't stay quiet anymore. I cannot. Like, I'm broken. Um, and he looked at me and he said, Mom, it's about time you stood up for yourself. Oh. <laughs> so when you said, like, you, I knew, I knew that even if I lost against Disney, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I lose? I mean, who am right. I? Are you right. kidding me? They could just keep it going, bleed me dry in about a minute. Yeah. Um, but I knew that even if I lost, I would win. Yeah. I would, I'd already won. Yeah. Because my kids saw their that, mother. That you, like, you cannot allow yourself mm -hmm. to get pushed around. Mm -hmm. I was already canceled. I knew that I would never get another contract from them. Mm -hmm. And it was like, so you just go, go out? Like, it wasn't about making a stink. It was about, what about the next person yeah. who complies with your stupid mandate? Yeah. But just speaks out about how violated I felt. But, yeah. I, but I complied. I, I followed the rules. Or is proud of being biracial and being all of me and not following whatever narrative. Right. Like, is that so wrong compared to my colleagues going on TV talking about Roe versus Wade on a basketball show? Like, right. what, what are we what are we doing? Right. So it was a similar thing there. But once we know 
the why. The, the why behind it and that it's bigger than us. And this is what I hope people take from this conversation with you. And by the way, conversation, not interview. It's a big difference. I like, love it. And it's what I pray that they take is that, yes, it hurts. Yeah. And it is so scary. Mm. And it is so costly. Yeah. Financially, yeah. that hurt. For yeah. little old me to stand up to Disney. Yeah. Hurt. Still does. Yeah, still does. But you know what? Always hurting. It's right? hurting. Sure. <laughs> but it's bigger than that. And yes, yeah. it's a faith that I just felt, okay, I feel like I'm doing the right thing for me and for others yeah. who don't have a voice. When people come up to you and write me emails and, mm. and they thank you. They thanked you for standing up. These women, these mothers— like they're, then you they're know. sobbing. They're sobbing yes. in my lines in these fan expos. They're crying, and it makes it all worth it. All of it makes it so worth it. So for people yeah. who say you're just out there, you know, trying to, you're mad because they called you on your opinions and your crazy tweets and all of your things. Like, yeah. no, 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 you're not. Like, this is much bigger than me. Right. Yeah. This is not. Um, this is about future generations. This is about my nieces. This is about your kids. This is about um, it making it that much more difficult next time they decide to do this, that they have to stop and think about how they're going to do that and how tricky they decide to get because they've been exposed. And um, I have nothing to hide. I want, let's go to trial. Let's like go and let's do do it all, oh. you know, because I, I, I conduct myself, I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve. Um, one of my coworkers texted me not so long ago, and he felt shame, which is why he hadn't reached out for so long. He thought I was going to be upset with him. He thought that because um, I had really stuck up for him at a point in his life, he 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 just felt he felt kind of just shame that he didn't think I'd want to speak to him. And I said no. I forgive, like, this This has been a very confusing emotional time for everyone. I don't think it's been right the way that massive corporations can treat one person and the way they treated my situation. He agreed completely with that, even though we have different um, opinions on things. He agreed completely that they, um, the, way, the way they treated me. Actually, people who are still working for Disney and still in Lucasfilm, they text me. And they said, I'm so proud of you oh, for sticking up for yourself. How did that make you feel to hear that from people I just, who are there? I, they're still there. And it makes me feel like um, what I did and what happened was worth it. And it is going to change down the line. And, you know, every once in a while, a big corporation needs to get straight up kicked in the nuts. And I did. And so did you. We did it. And we're continuing to do it <laughs> by not being silent. Yeah. Because it's easier to be silent. Yeah. But it is so much bigger than Gina and Sage and yeah. others. And that's, that's a blessing. Yeah. That we found it, like that we pushed through that fear. Yeah. And to know that you're not alone. Yeah. And I'm not alone. And that's what I wanted people to know, like, when I was speaking out, is because everybody was holding their breath. Yes. They were holding their breath. In California, I went over to this, like, big party on the beach, you know, with one of those big, huge houses. And the owner, the wife of, like, the, the own, you know, she owned the house, she came up to me and she's like, by the way, I hadn't been canceled yet. She said, by the way, I agree with everything you've been saying. It's a whisper. And a whisper. It's a whisper. And I was like, and I whispered back, this is your house and you're whispering. And she was like, I'm like, do you see how scary this is? So, um, yeah, no, it's, and you know, when it comes down to like the closure, cause I don't always, I don't want to stay here. You know, I don't want to stay. I'm starting to physically feel like that burden lift. I'm starting to, you know, work it out again and get in the uh, mixed martial arts again, which was Are my you? first like physical healing was, you know, when I was nine or 21, I got into the gym and it became an obsession. So I'm starting to get back there. Cause I, you know, for the last two years, I haven't really, been in it and you know my body suffered um 
I think sometimes we we put on weight and we try to protect ourselves, right? Like, uh, I think weight weight can be kind of like a protection of, um, mm. you know, like, don't look at me and I'm I'm safe in here, you know. Interesting. Um, it's also just a different kind of like, you know, you don't want to do alcohol, you don't want to do drugs, you don't want to, you know, um, have you know, mental problems. So, like, I think food is also, like, a comforting thing, you know, like, okay, that can be the comfort. Uh, I think a lot of people are struggling with that right now. Um, But when I think that you forgive yourself, you feel the shame lifted, and then you have a brightness about you, and all of a sudden your work is starting to come in, and you have something to look forward to, and you start, like, getting in the gym, hitting those pads, doing the yoga, doing whatever it is that makes you feel good, eating healthy, having your inside, your stomach feel good, you know, and like seeing that come out on your face, you know, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm headed there and it feels really good. It feels like a a, a rebirth, you know, and I have a ways to go, but man, uh, you know, because I have things to look forward to now. I have things, you know, brewing that are... Um, that I'm going to be more in control of and that I'm going to be able to uh, make sure that they're done right and people are treated right and um, executive produce them and act in them. And so I have so much more to look forward to than I did just months ago where I was in that desert. And um, so I'm definitely going to be a different story. I think, you know, it'll just keep growing. I'd like to put a period on that chapter and just kind of focus on the beautiful life because every day is a gift. Um, losing all the people I've lost in the last two years, which has been, I think, five or six. Um, I realize how precious life is now. And I wake up every morning and um, think, man, <laughs> if I don't like do something with my life and be grateful for it, uh, my little cousin passed away this year from cancer and she's 30 years old and she didn't get to live the rest of her life. So I'm living, you know, my life for the people that I lost that were very dear to me. And I would be very spoiled to not wake up and take that opportunity of having another day on this earth. So I'm, I'm in a definite, definite healing, excited, move forward, and it's not money. It's not, it's about, it's about touching people. It's about helping people. It's about interaction and, and, and really, really genuinely trying to get this world to heal and to start looking at each other as human beings sure. again because they tried to make us look at, at each other like we weren't. And so— You um, are right where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Like in every way. It's so cool. It's so cool to see. And I think you— by continuing to share like this are going to give so many people hope, number one, that strength to stand up in whatever way they need to, right? Because yeah. everyone's situations are yeah. different. Um, and also just like perspective, um, a reminder that everybody's dealing with something and yeah. don't judge from this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and your why, everyone has that why. You know, I think it's interesting because you could, you didn't have to fight this. Mm-hmm. Um, fair to say, like you, you grew up pretty well. Mm. You, know, you come from a wealthy family, a wealthy background, and you could have just um, decided not to fight. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that— Well, I, originally, I, <laughs> like, literally fight. <laughs> literally fight like, in every way. Yeah, my family, um, yeah, they didn't want me to fight. So they made every phone call to make that fight not happen. I was the first sa- sanctioned bout in Nevada for women's MMA. Um and my family were like, no, that's not happening. And they tried to make it not happen. And so I, I had to go through all these extra hoops and blood work. And like, you know, I think it's Herb Dean. Uh, he's a referee at the UFC. He always comes up and, well, he used to, I haven't seen him in years, but he always, remember when, remember they tried to stop you? <laughs> well, the thing is, is if the Corona family wants to stop something, like they, they know enough people to get in the way, to make it difficult for you, for their own daughter. Yeah, but, but, but they didn't. <laughs> Why did you, but, but. What is it that got you into fighting in the first place? Um, I was always a tomboy, and um, I was just very quiet, and I think people took that as mean or 
closed off and like, why isn't this person giving me attention? But it was just because I had social anxiety mm. as like a, you know, teen. Um, and it got me in a lot of ch- fights, you know, and I also really, most of the fights I got into were always standing up for someone usually. Like, um, I remember there was this basketball game, uh, that we had, I forget where, which, you know, we would, went to a really tiny town, um, to play. And, uh, there was this black girl on our team and she was the forward and we had just gotten done with the game and then outside, um, all of these girls had surrounded this girl, our, one of my teammates. And, uh, you know, I'm basically, I feel like it was just because she was black. And so I ran out there and it was like really interesting because I obviously am like, what, 16 maybe. And I'm standing in the middle with like all these girls just circling us and I was ready. And then in pops my older sister and we're like just like standing in the middle. <laughs> Take and, up. and like, you know, she, the black girl that was a forward was just so timid and shy and like, mm. you know, like was just not, not at all like this. They were just, she was just getting picked on. And so it was just me and my, my older sister and um, Taryn. <laughs> and we were just in the middle, like ready to throw down. Um and I think that, like, raising kids in Las Vegas is, uh, at that time was very scary. I mean, we got into a lot of trouble, you know, just rebellious spirits. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my older sister always wanted to sneak out, like, every night, and I didn't want to, but I was so protective over her. If she went in the ocean, I wanted to go to the ocean to make sure that she was going to wow. be okay. Yeah, I just always wanted to make sure she was going to be okay. Um, and I have that, that spirit about me with, you know, bullies. And so when I saw people get bullied, I'd get in fights basically. And then, um, you know, then, uh, moved into an apartment and, uh, all the people in the apartment, my, they started just using, we started off with weed and quickly moved to Coke and, you know, speed and things started coming in and me and Kevin, um, my partner, who I've known since I was 19, we took a long time off. And then, you know, we've definitely my partner for life now. Um, Marriage someday? Yeah, I'm trying to do the ceremony this year. Are you? <laughs> yeah, but oh I've got God. so much on my plate. I'm just trying. So are you engaged? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even see it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm the, I, I'll tell you where to send the invite. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. No, Come up to I'm Montana. So that's just, that's, that's so exciting in your, like, life he, partner that you've known. And he, he, um, you can actually go on Joe Rogan. His name's Kevin Ross. You can go and hear his story. He has a very, um, traumatic story as well. And when he was younger, um, that has to do with sexual abuse from somebody very close to him in his life. And um, so he chose at 23 years old to, uh, we were drinking 40, you know, old English, 40s since, you know, gosh, I don't know. Have you tried Brown that? Brown bag, lately? like the. Have you tried 40 English? Like it is, I tried it just to pick it up and see what we were drinking. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing. It's in the world. disgusting. So bad. <laughs> but we would drink those like water when we were in like high school. Um so he, uh, his dad had looked him in his face and he, he did have a problem then with alcohol at 23. And he said, what is it you want to do with your life? And Kevin always loved uh, Bruce Lee movies and he always liked these Muay Thai fights. And so Kevin was like, well, you know, i would be a fighter. I'd become a fighter, you know. Um, you know, Kevin uh, had such a, traumatic experience with the sexual abuse that he had cuts in all over his body. And um, he, uh, fighting was a way to have that kind of pain and that interaction, but have it be healthy. Mm. Um, Because I think he, to a point, enjoys pain. And so um, fighting helped him so his dad said, basically, you put that 40 of old English down, which we all know you finish your 40s to, like, you know, finish it. Um, and you put that down right now. It's not finished yet. Then I will sponsor you, and I'll give you money to go in mm. and um, walk into this Muay Thai gym. And Kevin had a decision to make at that moment, and he put the 40 of old English down and didn't pick it up. 
And he became one one of the groundbreaking Muay Thai legends of America. He's basically who made it popular. Oh. Um, and he is just this beautiful person and had such trauma happen to him that when people say bad things have happened to them in their lives and they use that as an excuse to dwell on things, it's like, well, no. I know somebody who <laughs> went through that. And we've all been through a little of some of that, but he really went through it. And um, he's a beautiful human being and gets up every day <laughs> and works hard from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. And he's, you know, he's my inspiration. So it took me a long time because I was in the world and I was, you know, I was just filming movies and I wasn't, but he, he hung on that long, 23 years he hung on and uh, people would tell me he never let go of the, you know, we always kept in touch, but I, I was just living a different life. And then when I had a very famous breakup, I, you know, went and um, had some time on myself. But then I went and I realized how incredible Kevin is. And I was like, you know. And so then we, so then we got back together and we acted like 19-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> you went right back. Yeah, we went back to acting like 19-year-olds. But then it wasn't until 2022, like January 1st, 2022. It was like, all right, enough of this, like, going back and forth. Because my family got to the point where they were like, okay, are you get They stopped asking if we were together because you just never knew. Because we were just kind of like these, we're acting ridiculous. And I said, you know, January 1st, uh, 2022. 2022, we're going to make a decision. And that decision we're going to stick to for the rest of our lives. And um, we woke up January, January 1st, 2022. And I couldn't have told you what the answer would have been December 31st, 2022. And I was still like, what? I don't know. I don't know. And then January 1st, 2022, we looked at each other and it was like, let's do this. And a part of me died that day. Um, this part that craved attention and wanted to feel free and independent. And, you know, a part of me died, but this other part of me has been growing that I love so much more. And it's um, in a partnership of a person who, even when I got canceled, was by my side and has been there for 23 years, no matter what. And I am... Um, Actually, the the person that introduced us was my best friend, Anthony. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. So it's beautiful. And I'm in this like, what do we do now? <laughs> Part of my life. I thought I was out of out of the art making and I'm definitely right back in it. And I think that's exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I have a a partner and I have a confidence and a peace. Of no matter what happens, um, God can work through whatever circumstance in your life has happened. And that is my purpose here now. Do you think that security that you feel with Him, that trust, that peace has, has now made you say, or I guess have the confidence to say, yeah, maybe I'm not done with the arts? Like, how much did, did, that He's relationship have yeah. to do with you feeling like I want to go back and do this again. He's my, he's like my anchor that I was running from for so long. I know I was the problem. <laughs> running from. I was running from him. And then I grew up and. With all the controversy? No, I mean, that did help. But I had started to grow up and just, I think a certain part of you has to go away. And a, a rebirth has to happen. And so, yeah, yes. I, I feel really good about it. <laughs> yeah, and also in general, like, you're such a strong, accomplished woman. And, you know, there's a thing these days with us not allowing men to be men, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like you can have a, a very traditional man who wants to take care of his woman and his family, yeah. uh, his partner, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like, and 
support and celebrate her. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, I feel like there's men now who are almost afraid right. to do that because of what society says. And I'm like, no, I think it's a beautiful thing. And yeah. you, keep, you, you help each other. Well, before, you know, all those other years before, we were in competition with each other and we were like, it was like, it was like a competition. And then after January 1st, it was like, oh no, we're on the same team. Um, we're on the same team in this mm. and we're doing this together. And now it's like, you know, he's an incredible um, mind. He's an incredible uh, artist. And it's kind of funny. We're working on this little book that is going to be pretty hilarious because <laughs> his art, he used to do uh, caricature art. Oh, wow. Um, so I remember I went to the Excalibur, the hotel Excalibur, and I'd watch him work. And he, <laughs> he did this, there was two girls that showed up, and he did them so dirty, like, so wrong. I was 23. <laughs> or, I was 19. And I was like, and, like, they handed over the money almost to her. And I was like, Kevin. What, what did you do? What is wrong with you? You just killed those people. For so life, I, like, yeah. And, and <laughs> You know, he just had seen so much in the hotel. Was so, but he's really um, this talented artist that he can actually, like, look at a person and pull out their soul and put it on paper. Oh. And um, it's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So um, with my—I'm more of, like, the words person, and he's more of the—he's um, more of, like, the artist person, although he does speak very well as well. But um, Sounds like you have, you have someone who— has your back for life. Yeah. Oh, what a what a and great has. feeling. And has even when you didn't want it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And how cool that he sat there. Like he waited. He, waited. he, he had faith that it would eventually happen. Um, you know, I know someone who knows you pretty well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know who this is. Um, and she said this. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the oh, what'd she say? First of all, that even when you were a kid, that you were kids, that you always, like, had, you were using your, like, leg wrestling moves on <laughs> her and others, family members. With Bubba. <laughs> yeah. Who's Bubba? Bubba's our family friend. Okay. He, he was, like, our big older brother that taught us how to snowboard, ski, uh, like, wakeboard. Above. Okay. Yeah. Katie also said. <laughs> Katie's my cousin, for those yes. who don't know. Katie, she, and incredible. I'm so grateful to have met her. I met her um, at Caesars at the um, Formula One race last fall. Yeah. And then again at Super Bowl, and I see her. She's just such a beautiful soul. She's a beautiful soul. Oh. And she's a beautiful person. I mean, yes, in every way. And and she worked her way up. Mm. She she worked her way up here in Los Angeles before yeah. even heading over. Successful. Yeah. So yeah, she did some homework, guys. On yeah. Katie Carano Miller. She's amazing. Um, but I see her runs in the family here, but she said that you are always there for all of them. Oh. Your entire family. Um, moving across country for people to oh, be yeah. there in literally every way. Um, and that you are the kindest soul on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, that means a lot coming from Katie because she is, uh, she is that to me as well. We are <laughs> the the my family is um, is very rare that you find people who don't abuse power, and that is my family. They have power, but they don't abuse it. They are uh, so special on both sides of my family. Their hearts are just pure, and they're good, and they really do want what's best and for everyone um, involved. And it's just, um, I got really fortunate, and I think that all of that that my family is has always impacted me and brought out who I am. And it's just, uh, I love you, Katie. <laughs> I love what a blessing. Family. What a huge blessing to know that despite all of the crap, man, all of the stuff that was wrong. Yeah. Flat they, out wrong that happened to you. Yeah, but they never they, they never stepped in. They never they my family is very um That's a great point. They allowed you to yeah. do this. Yeah. My family never stepped in. They never um they never gave me the end on Hollywood. They never wanted me to fight. 
They never introduced me to anybody that would help me uh, advance my career. They, when the cancellation happened, there was no, there was no um, offer of help. There was you, you know, my Papa Don Corano made it very clear early on that he, you know he sat all of us down in a room and he said, "You, you are responsible for yourself. You are going to. This is not a free ride." You are responsible for yourself. You are going to have to make it. And that we took very seriously. Is um, it the siblings, the cousins, everybody? Everyone. All, all wow. my cousins. And it was in the room. And I just remember him standing up and saying, this is not a free ride. So don't you get it in your minds that this is. And I remember that. And um, we used to talk about um, the, the Papa Don talk where he would take over, you know, my cousin Anthony and you know hey let's talk about law school or, you know take Katie over you take it you know everybody got the Papa Don talk but when it <laughs> came to me it was really funny Papa Don just looked at me and he smiled and he said <laughs> you're gonna do what you're gonna do aren't you <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh god can't control this one yeah but as my career progressed he was so proud and um it was so proud I was so proud of myself because I I was one of the few people that didn't get in the family business, and I made it as far as I did without any help. And they were proud of me because they didn't help. And um, that has just been a an incredible. I'm glad had they had helped, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today. Mm. You know what I mean? And so by you know standing back and allowing me the space to do what I'm doing now in the healing and all of that. Um, you know, that's, uh, I think that's a hard, it's hard love, but it's good love because you got to grow up and you have to deal with your, handle your business because mm -hmm. we're all handling our business and their their business is just as tough. Um, yeah, so. we're not doing our kids favors. Yeah. When here, silver platter. Yeah. Or to, to rescue them. Yeah, yeah. From moments, mistakes, or yeah. just tough situations that weren't their fault. It's yeah. Still, you got to climb out. Yeah. And I just keep picturing you in that fetal position. Yeah. The day you found out that you were fired, and you could have called on, you know, the yeah. family. Yeah. You could have done a lot of things. Yeah. And instead, you slowly but surely built yourself to the point where you are today with the, the energy and yeah. the smile back. It's and really funny. It never even crossed my mind to— yeah. I, I wanted to protect my family. I didn't want them to bring bring them into the cancer culture. I didn't want any of that You're for them. You're a protector. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and if I get the opportunity, um, I will continue that. You're hard. protecting others now. You're protecting strangers right now. Yeah. That's what you're doing. And yeah, I'd and hope so. You said the word earlier, justice. Mm-hmm. What does justice mean to you in this situation in your life as a whole? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, let's let God do the justice part. That's what I want. My justice will be so self-serving and so minuscule. I think God's justice is probably what I would want, um, which is not an easy realization to come to when you're in a struggling situation. But that plan is going to be way stronger and way better, and it's going to save way more people than my mind could ever conjure up. So I'll rely on God serving that justice, and I would be petrified for people that didn't know about God's justice because that is something that everyone will find out. This is so much bigger than a lawsuit. Yeah. That's the thing. It's so much bigger. And how awesome to have that peace knowing that through your faith and your experience, you're going to be fine. And I, I know that all this is worth it for you. Yeah. And uh, the fact, though, that you're willing to talk about it, that's the, that's the way you reach everybody. And most people are afraid to go there and to be vulnerable. Um, so I used to be afraid. And now I have this, like, 
confidence in my heart that's like, <laughs> what else? <laughs> all right, take it all. I'm not going to cave here. I mean, when you're talking about people's souls and when you're talking about people's lives, um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good and I'm going to get better and maybe in a year you'll see me again and I'll be even healthier. But wherever you see me, um, at least we had this discussion because I, I hope encourages anybody that watches. Thank you for encouraging me yeah. from a distance for all this time. Thank you. Who knew, <laughs> right? I love it. Who knew? I'm and, uh, so happy for what you're doing too. It's really powerful. You can feel it in the room. Thank you. That means the world. It's just simply about being okay, being ourselves, and talking about the crap. Yeah. And by talking about it, we heal too. Mm. That's what I, and I didn't want to talk. It's like, but then you realize what a waste. Yeah. What a waste of a tough thing where, you know, and there's a picture back there that people can't see, but right over your shoulder, those are my three kids. Oh. This is, this is bigger than me, you know? Yes. It's bigger than all of us. And like, um, yeah, so just thank you for inspiring and Keep that mask off. Keep yeah. smiling. <laughs> we have no reason to hide anymore. It's just, <laughs> it's just gonna keep getting coming off, and it's, I'm just gonna get healthier now. It's for me. It's like really genuinely about healing. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> for putting the socks on. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know they don't add up to Dana White's. You picked some cool ones. Oh, I know with his camo pants, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my god.